How's All it right. going? I'm right. How are you? I'm great. Doing good. Congratulations on everything that's sort of happened to you in the past couple of years and already having a new record, which is sort of your, it's your second record, but it's almost sort of also your third record in a way, right? Kind of. Yeah. The, that covers album that we did was all for, for fun. We didn't even think that was going to be released. Me and my piano player were just uh, hanging out in our studio board and started doing that. And then I sent it over to Sub Pop just to show them. And they were like, whoa, this is great. Let's release it. <laughs> so, so that was only supposed to be for fun, but yeah. ended up being a, being a record. I don't guess, uh, should, is it worth reading too deep into your song choices or, or anything like that? Or was it just like, no, oh, these I, are good songs? I think it was, I think it was very, it was very like random. I mean, we wouldn't be, we, we would kind of make like a, a tentative list, you know, and, and be like, well, we could do this one or this one. And we, yeah, we, we knocked out like a song a day for like a month, probably every day we were in there. And so, um, it was mainly just me and Kevin playing on stuff. And, um, yeah, there was, it wasn't that deep of a, it it wasn't like, Oh, we're going to do this song for this reason or, or anything like that. It was just songs that we liked. And then there was a few that didn't make it on there that, uh, were kind of funny. Like uh, by the time I sent like, uh, the guys at Sub Pop, my, like the first 10 that we had and told them we were intending on doing more, uh, there were a few like, oh, I would love to hear this one and this one. So we tried a few different ones. Beyond a few social movements, you just happen to be happening in the world right now. Pure coincidence lines up nicely for you there. But, you know, as I listen to these songs on your new record with Full Circle Nightmare, I thought, man, there's a lot of possibly broken relationship moments all over this LP. Yeah, so yeah. Like, there's a lot of retro, it's, you know, uh, broken in retrospect. You know, I, I, it was, it's a very, to me, the writing for this album was very reflective. Whereas like Dolls of Highland was very like in it, so, which I think is why the the lyricism for Dolls of Highland is a, a bit more, uh, it's, it's less attached to reality. Because that's kind of where it was. But uh, yeah, Full Circle Nightmare is kind of like looking back on all of it and and seeing it what seeing it for what it was and not like the illusion. To me, it would have played backwards for most other people because you had your first record, and of course, as they say, you have all the time in the world to write that first record. And for a lot of folks, that ends up being sort of the looking back. Whereas the second record, especially given at least from the outside, what it looks like, your schedule, I mean, it, you know, that record was only out two years ago, and and there is a, you know, a stopgap covers record in, in between, and how you're back, I thought, how have you had, you know, a chance to live your life that it would have been, you know, oh, I've got to write what's happening right now? Yeah, uh, yeah, writing's such a, a, a strange animal to me, you know, it's a, uh, you know, the ghost comes and goes, for sure, I mean, um, yeah, the full circle nightmare. You know, it comes in, in spurts. I mean, it, it's I'll I'll write, I'll have a, a kind of like a marathon writing where it's like I'll I'll like write half an album in like a month or something, and then it'll be like, all right, when's that other one gonna come? And it's like, oh, like three months later, here's another one or something. You know, but that's that's kind of, kind of how that whole thing went because I mean, I had some of the full circle nightmare songs written. Whenever Dolls of Highland came out, yeah, you know, they weren't recorded, but they were they were in their like little baby stages. It's nice to have at least a few in the trunk because you have also heard of that story plenty. Uh, you know, you've got your first record done. Now let's now you've got to prove yourself. Now the second record it has to be just as good. You know, and for a lot of artists, that's that's it's an empty tank going into it. So even having anything must have taken a little bit of the weight off. I think it helped to be writing in the same breath. It, so you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like uh, it helped to write it so soon. You know, which uh, which I love doing that. I, I, if it were up to me, I would put out you know like as much music as possible. Um, which I mean, I guess it is kind of up to me. But like uh, you know, with, with you, there's there's all sorts of uh, things that go into that. 
No, I mean, as a fan, that's, uh, I find myself, and maybe it's because, you know, I'm a little bit older now than I used to be. You know, I'm 36. I, I probably go see shows a little bit less. And, and in that state, like, I do, I wish there was a little bit of the old style uh, that went on where, you know, artists toured a bit less and released, you know, a record every year or sometimes two records a year. And, you know, because some of my favorite mm-hmm. records of, of classic artists is when their back was against the wall. The label was like, oh, we need another one out by October. You know, here it is January. And, and they go back in there. And, you know, that's what I loved about, I don't know, Doors, Strange Days or, or, or any of those. You know, it was almost like, I don't know, to be that kind of artist to say, the pressure's on, write me something great right now. Uh, I've always appreciated those. I, I think even when they crashed and burned. Three of my favorite records of all time. Easy, I mean, easily in my top 10, I think, would be Bringing It All Back Home, Highway 61 Revisited, mm-hmm. and Blonde on Blonde. Blonde on Blonde being my number one, but all three of those were recorded like in a year or something like that. It's insane. I mean, that's that's kind of like the wet dream for me. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's trying to put out music that rapidly. Right. And that, well, also that good. I would, I would much... <laughs> I know I would much rather like put out one great album than three shitty ones, but um, but Dylan, yeah, he was just like I mean to me those are his three best albums, and it was just like back to back to back. Right. I spent a lot of time fanaticizing over the Dylan catalog too, and 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 you know it's one of those things like you know ask me a different day and I'll give you a different era. I, I finally jumped into the um, the gospel trilogy because the box set just came out over over the holidays. And, and oh, yeah. finally fell in love with those records in a way that I would never allow myself to give even give the chance to uh, before. And it's because again, those were uh, written uh, three albums within a year and a half, two years time, and you know they all three play in that same breath. And uh, I, yeah, I really enjoy that. I, I love when that happens for an artist. Yeah, I you know I'm maybe it's just my age or something, but I still haven't gotten into those gospel records Mm -hmm. it's so hard for me (laughs) also just the the sound you know the quality of sound changed uh a decent amount i really like the uh very unhinged sound of of those uh, latter or those previous three that i mentioned yeah there's definitely some forgiveness Um, that has to happen when you go into those records <laughs> and I think, Oh yeah. I think recording quality is, is, is definitely one of those. Like once you can forgive that, you, you know, the lyrics don't even, and, and which is a silly thing to say about Dylan, by the way, that you don't even have to pay so much attention to the lyrics because the songs just really start playing themselves, uh, in, in, in a cool way. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I finally took that venture anyway. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try and bounce, bounce into that. Yeah. We'll see how that affects <laughs> your next record. We'll, we'll see if that's, uh, <laughs> Or maybe I shouldn't uh, <laughs> put out my gospel album. Right, right. Uh, I, I also, you know, speaking of all of that studio trickery, I, I know that that's part of the story with Full Circle Nightmare is, you know, the first one's done, uh, you know, at home in seclusion. Did the studio have any big learning curves for you uh, as far as working in it for the first time? No, no. I mean, because we went in and did it, you know, we tracked all the instrumentation live for the most part. I mean, ninety percent of it, I feel like, is or probably you know, eighty percent of it is tracked, like me with the band in the room. That is easy because you're not doing it. You're not pushing any of the buttons. You have an engineer setting up them. I mean, this is coming from someone who has recorded and done all the dirty work. Every bit of it I've done, you know, previously to, mm-hmm. to Full Circle Nightmare. And and so it was, yeah, it was very easy. I mean, the hardest part was just like getting in there and getting the right take, which didn't take long. We'd probably go through, I mean, some of them were one or two takes, some were 10. It, I, mean, I mean, we rehearsed a decent amount before we got in there. With that in mind, like being like, hey, we have like this amount of time to go in here and record this record. Let's, let's really fucking do it. And so we, we got in there and knocked it out pretty, pretty swiftly. I think we did the whole thing in like two weeks or something yeah. like that. But and that was doing the van, band stuff and then coming back and overdubbing horns and strings and, you know, vocals, vocals were last uh, but yeah, it was easy in comparison to like doing all of it yourself. Yeah. I mean, you can tell you guys are sort of doing it live in there. It's got a nice looseness to it that really plays well in those songs. 
Yeah, yeah, that, that's really what I was going for. I wanted that, you know, I, I really wanted that sort of bleeding sound. That's what, I mean, That I went in there with that intention of it sounding like that because, you know, I felt, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> also, you know, I, I I always catch myself being like, yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like a lot of records nowadays don't have that unhinged, like more old school rock and roll feel to them. Um but I always maybe maybe I'm pawning off like the uh, the skill as a player on that. <laughs> no, I mean it's true. It, it doesn't. There's not a lot of that sound. I, you know, a lot of music is big and produced. I mean, even mm-hmm. even a lot of the the you know minimal music is is still produced pretty heavily. So that you know, it, it's I think that's one of the things that stands out. I mean. Yeah, the songs are great. The choruses are fun, but there's also a feeling that is real, uh, and, and you know, for me, that's really what kind of captures right at the beginning. So, well done. Well, thanks, man. No, that's definitely what I was what I was trying to give for. That's why I really liked starting out the record with the with the tape rolling, you know, because that's that honestly was just totally the feel. It was it was just this thing where it was like you know rolling and then just bam, right, like hitting it, you know. And it was like that every morning. Well, I love it, man. I really do. Uh, congrats again on it. Uh, we'll see you out there on the road. I know you're coming to Louisville playing on the Dr. Dog Tour, so we'll catch you when you're here in town. Yeah, talking nice to you. talking to you. Yeah, thank you for calling. All right, buddy. Take care. Yeah, you too. All right, bye. Bye.